the destruction that occurred in black civilization took more than 600 years. So anyone coming in have to understand that you're coming and you are going to reconnect with your family. You're going to reconnect with the people whom you belong to. You know what, I really want to create a channel for Osman. Osman, what will be the name of your channel? Osman Today. Alright, so I'm going to put a link in the description. Make sure you check it out. Um, Jacob, Freedom, Caesar. He has so many names, but wait for it. I'm going to have a proper interview with him. I don't have time. He also doesn't have time. But this one is just... I mean, a tip of the iceberg, and um, trust me, man. I don't, I don't want them to go. I feel like I have more questions to ask. But hey, we have a lot of Africans in the diaspora, like you said, uh, African, Jamaican, uh, American, you know that kind of thing. But right now, I mean, a lot of them are coming back home. Do you think that it's time for them to come back home? Because Marcus Gavi said, Africa for Africans, both Africans in Africa and Africans abroad. Yes. So do you think it's time for them to come back home? I mean, this is home. So where else can they be other than home? It's high time for us to come. I just want to say something. Feel free. Um, the destruction that occurred in black civilization took more than 600 years. So anyone coming in have to understand that you're coming and you are going to reconnect with your family. You're going to reconnect with the people whom you belong to. So open mindset is very key. Yeah. Let us come, get into the realities on the ground, learn about the culture, see what is going on in the continent. Let us work through education, investing in the continent, and then we promote a continental agenda. Well, I, think come back. I mean, personally, I think diasporans have been, lack of a better word, but I have just said that they've been a great inspiration when an African has to look at a diaspora. Mm. But they haven't become a great contribution to the expected development of Africa. And the reason why I'm saying this is because, and I'm saying this not to push the nerves of most diasporans, but to actually inspire and motivate them to take the right step. As much as they have learned and acquired great experience from the Western system, 80 to 90% of these people have used Africa as a holiday moment. Just come in and say that I'm going to be in touch with my ancestry and my this and my that. And the most they can stay is two months and they disappear again. So that whole exodus of people crossing the water that Bob Mali prophesied as movement of the Jah people repeating itself in the days of revelation. I'm yet to say it. But I just want the diasporans to understand that they have acquired so much knowledge, so much experience from the Western, that if they have to contribute that to the current industrialization that will revolutionize the development of Africa, mm. it would bring speed. It would bring such a big value. But there is a border. They are very used to the Western. We don't have a system for them. And I don't blame them. When they come here, they look at our infrastructure, they look at our system, hospitals, people, I've seen people who have visited, you know, African countries from Europe and they got sick and they didn't get good treatment and they died and it scared other people from coming. So, you know, we have our issues and they have our issues. But we need to realize that these are issues that we are the only solution to that issues if we're to come together to build Africa again. And that would take sacrifice, commitment, passion, drive, determination, and more, and more, and more. So definitely, I expect them to cross at some point very soon. But I expect the Africans to start the movement and let them see the value that has been created that they need to be a part of. You want Africans in the diaspora to come back to Africa, to be part of the chain that we're looking for. But we have Africans that are also living. I mean, they are not even the proper way. They are passing through the Mediterranean Sea just to go find greener pastures, right? But what do you have to say about that? Because, you know, people keep on attacking me. Why are you keep on telling us to come back while their own people are passing the back way to go to where they are? So it's the level of development. Africa has a very low level of development in terms of human mindset, social living lifestyle, social infrastructures, 
you know, basic infrastructures, educational, academic infrastructures. All of these are low levels. They tap under 25%. So I don't blame those people running on ships trying to get away from here because they feel like if they're living on $5 a day here and they can get $50 a day somewhere, anybody would try to, even the ant, if he can't find sugar here and he finds out it's there, he will crawl and go there. So that's the problem. They're running away because our level of development is lower and they can't create a fortune and make a living out of it. Hence, that's why there's so much corruption in Africa because everybody has been stripped down their value. You're, you're getting $200 when you have a wife and four children and, and then the educational facilities is charging you $800 to pay your kids' fees. So definitely you have to do something <laughs> to be able to pay for your kids. So you're forced to do wrong. And it's our system. But that's what we've been talking about. Until we decide to change the mindset and we step up to build our own industrial platforms, our own factories, manufacturing hubs, our own technology hubs, our own energy plants and cities, and providing sources to the, the cities, the countries, for people to be able to have the right jobs, the right lifestyle, the right accommodation, the right system, our people will forever be running from us. Come, come closer. Oh, yes. Come. Just come. I'm doing something different today, yeah? Um, you said you were based in USA? Yeah. You are born and raised in the USA? Yes, Los Angeles, Los California. Angeles. Did you ever hear anyone calling himself Queen or Queen and Queens? Yes, I did. It had so many times, right? Yeah. So I just want to ask, yeah? If they are calling themselves Kings and Queens, then where is the kingdom? What, are, what do you mean by what you're saying? Are you saying that black people are calling themselves it's Kings and Queens? Kings and Queens, yeah. Look. I mean, this, this is a great question you just asked me, and I'm just going to answer it by using Coming to America Part 2. You have studio kings, you have studio queens. You have people that claim a kingdomship that they don't even belong to. They will wear things. When people are crowned, they're not necessarily a king or queen just because they have a crown on their head. But, you know, it's a glory that is bestowed upon a family that becomes a royalty that lives within nations. And Africans were the people that have always had this. We go by... Monarchy. We have just gotten into democracy in less than seven decades. Our history said we were kings and we were queens. This is a fact. You can find it there. There is nobody that can tell me that they bestow people as kings and queens in America. It's not their culture. <laughs> it's not there. So if you hear someone calling themselves a king or a queen, it's a paper king or it's a paper queen or it's a movie queen or a king. And that's what I ask, where is the kingdom? So why? Uh, it's here. It's here, but we are not. We are so, not. So are, you, are you trying to say that you can't call yourself kings and queens, knowing the fact that you've never been on the motherland? Well, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is that this is more a Demurphy king of or prince of Zamunda, <laughs> and there's no Zamunda in Africa, Africa, and there is no prince that lives in a studio in America that claims to be a prince. There's only one prince of Africa and his name is goddamn Freedom Jacob Caesar. <laughs> Period. <laughs> Period, okay? So I, I, I have to put people right in that perspective if, 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 if we have to find out, okay? This is, this is it. Yeah. This is it. Whoa. I mean, that's, that's good, you know. I, I, I mean, I, I don't even want to stop. I mean, but that part was really good. That part was really good. So you got something, man. Right? I, I will like to say about Freedom Jacob Caesar that something I've learned from him is that royalty, to be royal, it's an inner ordination. So it's something that has been divined upon you. You can't choose it for yourself. So it's an internal change that happens. You're called to it, and it's reflected outward in your personality. So he, when he calls himself a king, that is who he has been divine to be. He's been ordained to be that. He's not just calling himself that. The kingdom was born in him. Mm. So that's where the kingdom is, to answer your question. Uh, I think um, I've done a lot today, man. How many hours, bro? <laughs> well, I mean... I mean, I, I, mean like, I, I, I love it. I just it's been a great conversation, yeah. touching base with ourselves. We as Africans, now that we're growing, we're beginning to realize yeah, that maturity um, is great. Let's, let's take one more time. Just, there's this question I want to ask. Go go, back. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I'm in Ghana right now, right? And I have to talk about Ghana. I mean, mm -hmm. 
Ghana is 64 years old. Yeah. I mean, just six March, we're celebrating Ghana's independence. But to me, I think the country is not independent. The country doesn't have that freedom. I mean, when you talk of freedom, we're talking about economic freedom. Do you think that African countries, as they claim, we have independence? Do you think African countries have that freedom that we're looking for on the continent? I mean, um, before, because you use Ghana as an example, so I would not want to go far. I just want to give you a quotation by the late president of Ghana, J.J. Rollins. Um, may his soul rest in perfect peace. Mm. He said, Africans are yet to liberate themselves from the men who succeeded the white people at independence. And that is our own people. So independence, in quotation, flag independence was attained on no iota of doubt. But the trajectory through which Nkrumah inherited Ghana and the trajectory through which he was leading this country, at some point, that interest has been hijacked by leaders who doesn't fulfill the same mission, the same vision and interest that we had for this country. <laughs> so no wonder it has slowed the development, it has slowed and even at some point hijacked the independence of not just Ghana, but many other African countries. Unless we define independence in a very myopic way, and that we will be, say that will be that will be flat independence. Then we can say African states are independent. But again, this is a developer. He has invested in a lot of houses all over. I mean, I had a conversation with him before here, and even having to go and watch one of your interviews with other developers across Africa, and there was this central question about where do they get their equipment. Even a door to fix here, he needs to order it from outside. So that tells you that something is wrong with our independence. For us to move ahead, not just political, political has to be there. We must be able to take decisions on our own as a continent. And again, economically, we have to make sure that we attain full self-sufficiency. Let me say this. These three things, there is no country that can call itself developed without attaining it. And that is the culture, the education, and the economy. These are very key in every nation. You must be able to make sure that you move your society from point A to point B through strategic economic standpoints that are independently yours. And at the same time, when it comes to culture, we have to be able to make sure that we are proud of our culture. We work with it. We do whatever that we want to do with our culture mm. without apologizing to anyone. So we have to get this. But one key thing that I will also want to highlight before I move on. Now we talk about globalization across the continent. And at some point, globalization, globalization has undermined the independence of many African states. We have, been, we have been fooled to make sure that we have to open up our markets to everybody. Get this. We have to share ideas all over the world. And again, let us look at the African market. Mm. If we open it up our markets to everybody, why is it difficult for Africans to trade among ourselves? But what you see is an extract trade system because international financial institutions everywhere were built with a monopoly of Western knowledge. So what you see is resources going from Africa to the West yes and not seeing a similar channel with the same values as he was saying, happening. So unless we save our own economic trajectory, mm. unless we save our own political trajectory, unless we save our own development, we can call this continent a developed, an independent one. Yeah, the ability to be able to have the chance to do whatever you like with the nature and the resources that is around you is the definition of independence, okay? And freedom comes in different versions. You have financial freedom, like you said already, economical freedom, you have all types of freedom. But one thing that makes it become general is when you are able to control your development in resources that controls the economy, that actually assists the people that live within that vicinity. So as a continent, do we have this? No. 
So that means the freedom that we have or the independence that we have is a democratic independence. <laughs> it's like established independence, but it's not a living independence. It's, there is a gap there. That gap needs to be bridged. Not to say that our forefathers haven't tried their best to make that become uh, a reliable source for us as having our independence. They have tried. But I also think that it's our responsibility to continue the journey that they started, you know, to create more room for independence for people, financial, economical, revolutional, industrial, and all the type of freedoms that we need to be able to have a global, respected, systematic platform that governs a continent, not just a country. Because I always see Africa, success would come as United States of Africa to be able to have an economy that yields trillions of dollars like America by trading between ourselves. And the only way to do that is to have industrial platforms mm. that we would be able to refine and manufacture our products and create distribution channels that we start to distribute our products from countries to countries. This is the only sense of unity I see because Gambia speaks a different dialect. Ghanaian speak a different dialect. And probably there's seven dialects, there's about 50 dialects in Ghana. And then by the time you get to Nigeria, it's about thousand already. So definitely we can't understand ourselves by languages. And we can't unite by languages, but we can unite by exchanging value a with street. each other. Yes. And that is a form of unity, a sense of unity for me, and it's also freedom. You want to add anything else again? Oh, We're good. All You're right. good. So I just want to say thank you so much for talking to me. Thank, thank you. you so much for sharing wisdom with me. It's your favorite village boy, Mr. Ghana, baby. And all I need to do is to salute you all. <laughs> I'll see you <laughs> next time. Bye.